Okay, thanks for watching my first video, here's the second one. Since somebody asked me to do the next video about the batteries, that's what I'm gonna do. Thanks for your comments and I hope you will enjoy also this one. So this is my one wheel battery pack. As I mentioned in the first video, it's designed out of four packs. Why is that so? Let's first take a look how it looks inside. Nothing special, just uh, three cells in parallel with three cells in series, which makes it 12S3P when you connect all the four boxes together. So why is it divided in four boxes? The answer is quite simple. You are not allowed to put more than 100 watt hours battery on a passenger airplane. However, some of them allow you to take up to 160 watt hours with a special permission. My single battery pack is under 100 watt hours, which makes it legal to fly on a passenger airplane. Never found a single information about how many 100 watt hour batteries you can have. So having four boxes under 100 watt hours should be totally legal. Although the batteries are gonna need to be removed from the one wheel to take it on an airplane and they are only allowed to be in the cabin baggage, the VX wheel itself will probably not be allowed in the cabin but in the checked baggage because of its weight and size. I hope I will test this soon and also post a video about that. Let's see how it's made. So the housing is 3D printed out of uh, hips material with 100% infill because the walls are actually quite thin so there's no place for any mesh to be applied. The cells I used are uh, LG H uh, G2. Actually any uh, high current cell will do. I just chose these ones because I got a good deal for them. Just keep in mind they should be rated at, at least 15 amp. I suggest they are 20 or 25. Uh, those ones are rated at 20 amp. This is how all four boxes uh, look ready for bonding. I'm using additional isolation here because I'm gonna solder the wires to the main positive and uh, negative pole of each box. Anyway, I recommend using additional isolation on all positive sides of the battery cells because the negative is just under the shrink tube and you can get a shot pretty fast if your tabs overheat. I didn't have that isolation available when assembling those packs so I'm using some kind of thin gap filler. Here I'm using the Sunco 738AL spot welder. It's actually not a bad spot welder but some of its components are of terrible quality especially like the mains power cable and the mains fuse. I changed those with a thicker input cable and actually just bridged the fuse. It also blows up the standard European uh, 16 amp automatic fuse when working at uh, higher currents so I needed to connect it to a 32 amp uh, power source or fuse in order to work properly at higher currents. After fixing the input current uh, cables and uh, fuse the only problem that uh, remains of this uh, Sunco machine is that it overheats when uh, working for I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. So you need to wait occasionally for it to cool down. It stops automatically when it uh, when it overheats, but uh, you will anyway need to wait because the pan gets quite hot at high currents. So you will wait because it's uh, too hot to handle while spot welding. As you can see in the video, using a magnet can be very helpful holding down your nickel strips while spot welding. Let me explain the settings. In this occasion I used uh, 0.15 pure nickel strips and on my Sunco the settings were pulse at 2, 
current at uh, 89 and super pulse uh, settings was at 8. I tested out also the 0.2 thickness pionicle strips but couldn't get such a nice weld so I decided to stick with a little bit thicker material and better welds. Here I'm adding the last uh, pieces of the nickel strip. So that's basically it about welding. Why I'm using uh, three welds on each cell just because three is better than one. I should be doing this before assembling the batteries. Making tabs for the screws of the cover. I just finished the first battery. As you can see all the parts are numbered. This is uh, battery box 2. It has two here, number 2 here. This is battery box 1. I'm gonna show you how to assemble the wires on battery 2. Back. For the mains I'm using uh, silicon wires of uh, 12 wire gauge. I'm gonna split the wires. Soldering on the cells must be done very quickly, not to overheat them. As you can see, I'm using uh, 4 mm gold bullet connectors for the mains power. They will connect uh, all the four boxes together in a serial connection and then go to the chip fucker. If you want to download the STL files for the battery housings, I will publish them and uh, there is going to be a link in the description. So feel free to use my battery pack design. There is some more footage coming up uh, about the balance leads. Let me know what you want to see in the next video. I have a lot of footage of the chip fokker soldering since I made my own boards. I also filmed the range test uh, of the VX wheel. This is how the packs are gonna be connected together. In the meantime I'm already making the second VX wheel. This one is gonna use the float wheel motor which should uh, reach higher speeds but we'll see that while I test it and get a video about the difference between the two hub motors. For the balance leads I'm using uh, 22 wire gauge uh, silicon wires. Each box will have a, a standard uh, GST XH uh, connector for the balance leads. They are later on gonna be uh, connected to the BMS. see some holes uh, are for the screws and some are left for the cables for the balance port. I 
I don't have the crimp tool for the GST XH connectors, so I'm just soldering the pins and uh, I'm gonna crimp the real part of the, of the pins. This is it about the battery pack design. Don't forget to add the fuse. I used the Maxi Blade uh, fuse rated at uh, 60 amps. As you can see, it's fully packed. I barely found some space on the left top corner for the fuse. You can see the balance leads that are going to the front since the BMS is in the front. I'm gonna show you about that in the next video. I also made declaration stickers for the battery and they go right here in the spot on the tail point. That's it about the battery design. Subscribe and see you next time.